and welcome to a special Sequin Girly Creates. This is one of the special ones, a bit like the Me Made 9, where I'm talking about the May, my, May Makes, My May Makes, or <laughs> there's too many M's. It's that one, it'll be in the title. So just like my, meme, my Make 9 challenge, this Me Made May, I want to really think about it. I'm a couple of days behind everyone else, but I'm okay with that because I'm on my own journey and in my own speed. So welcome. If you haven't already, I'd love it if you could subscribe and like my channel because that's what helps me to get seen and also to keep me going. Thank you so much to people who've already found me and have left comments about my Make 9 update and people who are subscribing and I think finding me on Instagram as well is giving me the motivation to keep going so I really appreciate you thank you to the Yorkshire So Girl who has found me and left a comment I love her channel as well and I'll pop her link below and my Me Made May is inspired particularly by Becky Sows and on her channel for her Me Made May she really talks about her own wardrobe and reviewing it so I'll leave her link below to that video and also her channel because she really inspired me with how I wanted to do mine hence why I'm a little bit behind because it's my first year I've seen some people have been doing it for five years now and I'm looking forward to when I get to that point let's start with what I'm wearing today so I have a self-made cardigan on that I sewed I bought the pattern from a charity shop it was one of the ones that came into one of the sew magazines and it's a cardigan and I've made it in a stretch jersey from First for Fabrics. It's like a constellation jersey. I'll just turn around so you can see the back. I made it quite long. I think if I made it again, I'd make it shorter. The other thing is I did slim the sleeve and shorten the sleeve. But I still think I might like the sleeve even more in a bit like this. I did look on Fibre Mood and there was a great jersey cardigan on there with lots of pleats around the collar. So I might try that. Uh, it's this sort of like it's almost like terry on the inside and I use my serger for all of the stitching up I will put the link below to what the pattern was and I'll try and put a picture up here uh, but I enjoyed sewing it up because it's one of those great throw-ons it doesn't look um, crunched up and, and creased when you throw it in a bag and that's just great for this time of year is spring the earrings that I'm wearing are made by myself using jesmonite. So I've made resin ones, but this is a jesmonite, so it's like a flatter colour. And I made those a couple of years ago. I'm just a ready to wear top. So let's start with my thoughts. I've been thinking a lot about the wardrobe I want to create and wearing a wardrobe that reflects me and that I feel comfortable in and not what the shops tell me I should wear. If you've seen any of my other uh videos you will see that I love to go to charity shops I love thrifting and one of my favorite things to do is to find the sale rail the one pound rail not all charity shops have them but in my local town I know which ones do and where it is and I love that because they're things that clearly no one else is going to buy and sometimes they might have a bit of mark or a bit of damage and I feel like I can repurpose them reuse them and make them something great so I know there's a bit of a conversation around not buying things that are not your size and then making them fit you and I completely get that but my attitude is if I have bought it from the sale rail which means the charity shop has had it out for sale for a long period of time and they're having trouble selling it then I am comfortable in refashioning or resizing it because without that it'll end up going to textile recycling so I do feel okay about doing that I wouldn't do it unless it was a piece I absolutely adored I wouldn't do that from the main rails sometimes I will buy things that are just like a smidge too big and just do a little dart but I won't buy like things that are way beyond my size that I will refashion I know there was a movement in the past to buy it and use the fabric but I'm really trying to think about other people being able to buy those but once it gets to the sale and it's reduced and it's not gone to a home then I feel differently about that so some of the items you will see are those much of what I have for my Me Made May is clothes that were perfect for me pre my breast reduction operation that now when I put things on they're not how I remember them in my mind and so I need to I'm, I'm, there's a, lot, a weird sense of like disconnect when I'm getting dressed in the new seasons at the moment because my operation was last October 
So I am having a lot of time. So at one period, point in this video, you will see a huge sorting out. This is one of the things I've done for me, my mate, is sort out all of my spring and summer wardrobe that I haven't worn or tried on. There was a massive amount of trying on and I did do it in stop motion and sped it up. But I have really tried to go through and analyse my wardrobe because so much of it are textiles and fabrics and things I have memories with that I love, but I can't wear them anymore because they either don't suit me or they're not the right size or I just have to accept that I'm never going to be that size anymore and it's just making me sad keeping them. So I want a wardrobe that I can wear now and enjoy and love right now. There are some things that you will see that I did a big sort out and I'm looking right now at two giant Ikea bags of clothes that I'm going to sell because I'd rather somebody else enjoyed them and I'm not going to cut them up and I'm not going to hack them about because I'd rather they went and were enjoyed but there are some clothes with a small tweak that I will really love rather than being okay-ish. So let's start. I've got some tops. They're tops that I bought last summer. So there are t-shirts that I feel with a quick change won't be so loose on me. So there's this one and this one and this one. And with my surging skills and my understanding of darts, I'm going to make the tops bit more tailored to suit me a lot of tops aren't tailored anyway so I'm going to tailor them you will see I'll pop a video in here so first of all is this top I bought it in a charity shop in, in the town over from where I live I wore it quite a bit it really annoys me where the facing doesn't stay under which tells me it does look like it was understitched actually yeah it was understitched but it's just not staying under so I might have to do something so when I put this on, I put this in the pile because it is now too low. There's not enough chest to keep it there. I'd have to wear a top underneath and in the summer that's not what I want. I'm not comfortable with this much on show. So I've got to work out what to do. It's got enough length that I think I could take it up at the shoulders a bit. The armholes would be better then because the armholes are a little big, not massive. So if I just do a little up at the shoulder, so if we go from here, the question is, could I just do a tuck over at the front? Because there is plenty of room at the front. Could I do a tuck over and then stitch it down the front? Almost like a seam. I think that looks better actually than... So I like the way it's got the wideness, but I think that would create the modesty I want without losing everything else, including the length. Yep, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tuck it over. I'll give it an iron. It's about a centimetre and a half, about three eighths of an inch, and just stitch it all the way down the front. really not liking the way that bias binding is flaring well I don't like that at all <sighs> so let's have a look this is not going to be possible to do the front well I could do the front tuck if I pull that all forward does that does that it's too tight at the bottom so it'd have to be that's not this is where it's not right so it's just me. Okay, charity shop bargain, uh, one pound in RSPCA. Lovely summery top. Let's have a look, see how it looks now. This was bought again last summer. Um, am I a floaty? Oh, is it one of those ones that's meant to come off the shoulder? Is it? Or is it not? Well, it's not for me. I know the armhole's too massive then. Um, huge armholes. Do I just take in the sides? That's much better when it doesn't swamp me like that. I think, yes, it's a take in the arms, isn't it? that because if I look at that that's 
that's definitely a that's definitely a top I like I like the color okay so that's got a big gap under there and there we can lose that bring the frill together and lose that down the sides okay have a look this is like a button down but i can definitely still get it over my head it smells like someone else's washing powder it's always a funny thing well that fits absolutely perfectly oh i hate it when those um basins poke out that is a perfect fit and definitely something i want to model other ones on i would say a little bit tight around the the hips but that's okay because tucking it in it will be fine so i need to give that a wash but i would be wanting to make others like this i would say so i need to use that when they're in the sale because that tells me nobody else wanted them hence why they're in the sale look at the size of the armhole size of the armhole look at the width so is this just a case of bringing the sides in and then yes i think it's a uh, it's a perfect top so some time and it did not suit me pre-reduction does it suit me now no it does not i I love the colours, it is just not for me and I just don't think I can find a way to make it for me. That needs to go to This one, I love this one. I think this is an attach a skirt one to it because it goes over because you've got the t-shirt in back. It's got the little button at the top to over make it go over your head and I think I just need to add the right material to the bottom of this for a flared skirt it's perfect nothing to mess with there I think and it's that lovely embroidery on glaze fabric on the front need to be done with that one okay let's talk about this one I bought this vintage from the vintage seller when I went to Rye with my friend what's not to love look at the back look at the pattern of the on the back but it's just too wide for me so I had two thoughts about this one was to bring in the armholes which kind of like brought the width in so I'll show you what I mean suddenly that fixed it if I pin that and show you so just pinned in the arm I'm pleased to see that the um, shoulder pads have I've not survived the age because I really don't need any more. So that just brings it in and slopes it down. But I still think it makes me look pretty wide. The other option is to take some off the ends where it's just... I talked about this in one of my videos because of my shallow shoulders. I like hand stitch it. But can you see from that to that... I think it would need to be coupled with pulling that in and then suddenly I go from being swamped to it feeling like it belongs to me. I think that's what needs to happen. Let's see if I can just pin that to show you what I mean. More tricky. Can you see the difference then between that side and this? okay this one is a top i made last year to go with a skirt i'd made the year before i tried my own well i did facing on the back and bias binding on the front and it's well it's a bit of a mess so is this a can i resolve it or does it need to go and what i don't understand is how did i fit in it last summer because there is a picture of me in it I think it's a mess. I think it's an absolute mess. I I just think it needs to go. Sometimes you've got to know when something's not working, haven't you? And I think that is it. And we're going to get rid of it. It's a mess. So hopefully in that video you could see a huge try on of me trying on a lot of tops and working out whether I can tweak them 
to keep or to sell and that is one of the biggest things I'm doing with my Me Made is I'm not retailing everything. Some things are just going to go to new homes. Might be charity shop as well. I'm working through that with the giant bags. But hopefully you've just seen a video of me, my thought process of that. I'm going to put a video in now of the giant sort out so you can come along with me on the big sort out. So I'm going to put that in here. So hopefully you've seen it was huge. I did it over the bank holiday weekend and really went through and really thought carefully. And some things went into a second sort. I had such good memories from them. I didn't want to, them to go, but I had to accept that I needed to. So I've put that in there. And then I'm going to put another video in here of some of the trying on. So hopefully now you can see I've been through a really big process that's been a journey for myself mentally around my wardrobe and if you want to know more about that I talk about that in a lot of my videos and that whole journey I'm going on and I am a woman of a certain age who wants to still feel good 
still feel visible and feel happy with myself. And part of that is every piece of clothing I put on, I want to feel good. I could easily just keep buying new fabric and making new, new, new all the time. But I am coming to terms with the fact that that is no different from shop, shop, shop. So I'm really trying to create a balance in my life of what have I got that I could still wear that I love and why don't I wear it? What needs to go to a new home? What can I tailor because it will suit me better? And what then can I sew and make to fill the gaps? Because for some of my clothes, I want to wear them, but I'm struggling to know what to put with them. I am not a neutrals. If you've seen my Instagram page, which is Sequin Girly, you will know I am not a neutrals. And I can understand why some people are neutrals. Jerry Halliwell, from what I read, uh, Ginger Spice, only wears white. I get it, because everything in her wardrobe matches. But for me, that's not where I'm at. That's not who I am. And I love colour and I love to express myself. I have an art degree. I'm very creative. My current job isn't, but I somehow bring it in. But the clothes I wear are part of my creative expression, hence my channel Sequin Girly Creates. And so I want a wardrobe that is me. And I know a lot of other people wouldn't feel comfortable. I often have people say, oh, I wish I could wear colourful clothes. Tell me how to wear colourful clothes. It's a journey. But one of the biggest challenges I find is making sure I've got something to wear with a piece that I love. And that's what I want to do for me made with my sewing. And I did talk about that in one of my previous channels with some fabric and by actually buying planes. However much there's amazingly patterned fabric out there, I either need to make cohorts or I need to pick a palette for some things or actually sew some planes because otherwise I'm not getting the joy. And I really don't want to keep putting amazing coloured top with black trousers or skirt it's a very 90s look I don't want to do it I've got a lot of inspiration from Instagram on not how to do that Erica Davis is brilliant her book Leopard is a Neutral I'll put the link below really talks about this pattern clashing and how to put things together and that's something I'm working on let me show you some of the things that I am going to adjust so the first one is this second hand new to me Sainsbury's uh, striped dress it's like a button-down classic it could, <laughs> it could have been made by me if you think about some of the other things I've seen it's almost like the collarless patina blouse uh, with a skirt it's not the right length on me where it hangs on my body does not suit me and you might have seen it in one of the videos of the try on but I love it and I love the feel of the fabric well thank goodness for Becky Lane uh, on Instagram because she had a peach skin striped fabric. How could I not? If you've seen my channel or my Instagram, how could I not want this? And this works perfectly with this. So I might create a frill, I might create an extra layer, I don't know. But And then I've got this one. This one did the same. It's another vintage dress. Not sure what era. I would definitely say probably late 80s or 90s again it's definitely not 70s and it's definitely not the noughties as that we like to say it doesn't feel good that the no early noughties are now vintage let's not talk about that so it looks like this I love the construction at the back you can see the light shining through look at the back there that's gorgeous and something I want to try and replicate that there with that little crossover it has a lined skirt. That's always how you can know that you're getting something that's that's uh, more vintage with the, the lined skirt. And what used to be an elastic waistband. And this is one of the things I love doing with vintage is starting to explore. And it's often the elastic that goes, which is a clue to the age very often as well. There's the elastic. You can see how old that is. So I need to decide, and look how thin that elastic is as well. I need to decide if I want to replace it, I'll just put a few patches of elastic in, maybe at the, the sides to pull it in. Because right now it just hangs a bit too loose, but I love the colour. I love this combination. I think it's a perfect spring summer with a blazer over the top. Particularly it's got the line skirt as well, but it just needs a little bit of TLC and then I'll start putting it back on. It. And then last of all in this selection is a dress that fitted me beautifully pre-op. 
but now does not but i love it it's that sort of it is a it feels viscousy it's got a nice drape to it and um, pre-op the bust line on it was not in the right place on me but it is now but it's just too loose so i've got to decide whether it's just a couple of darts at the back i did originally when i bought it lower the neckline it was too high but pre-op i couldn't wear really high necks so i lowered the neckline and shortened the sleeves which i'm really happy i did because they were that wrong length on me cut right across there but it's now too loose so i think a little bit of tailoring a little few darts maybe at the back it's got a lovely hidden zip and then it will work perfectly for me then i can start when i've done all of that thinking about what else to sew as you know from my other videos i've got endless sewing projects and ideas but i really want to focus this month however much it can feel a bit like oh is fixing the gaps with the sewing rather than just i love sewing for pleasure it is a hobby it is a joy so i do want to keep doing it for that reason but i also want to sew to fill the gap so i wear the items that i have with the things that i sew I could endlessly sew patina blouses and my sewed dresses with gorgeous fabric, but that's just adding more and more to my wardrobe so things won't get worn. So I have to have a word with myself. Of course, I'm going to balance it just with joyful sewing because it is a hobby. You may well know already because I have mentioned it in previous videos as well. I took a vow about three years ago to try to avoid to buy new and that's going really well i rarely buy new now um i don't beat myself up if i do because every step every piece of progress is progress there is the odd occasion i do buy things i'm not ready to sew swim wear yet so i did buy a new sewing costume recently um some of the things that i buy that are new are still second hand so they might be new with label so from vintage etc because i still feel that Someone has already purchased it, so it's already in the system. But what I don't want to do is be just a continuous consumer of stuff. That was spoken about on a couple of episodes of So Over It podcast, which I'll put in the links below as well, is lots of us have moved away from fast fashion to thrifted, vintage, secondhand, sewing, all of those different aspects to not be a consumer of more and not to bring more into the market. And I do try, as you've probably seen, to buy secondhand fabric. I often have success, but I can't always get what I'm looking for. So I will buy new fabric, but making fabric also can risk having environmental damage. So the next step is I try to buy from places like Rainbow Fabrics, etc., who sell dead stock, because that's, again, already something in the system. But I still want to be mindful I don't want to end up with a wardrobe of fabulous fabrics that I fell in love with, of items I sew that I don't wear or I can't wear because I've got too many. My goodness, this Me Made May has really made me start to think. Thank you for joining me. I hope that there's something of interest. This is not my usual kind, but you will see lots more sewing and things through my Me Made May and there's plenty more of my episodes coming with actual sewing so if this one wasn't for you don't panic there's plenty of sewing out there that I've got ready to share or I'm preparing to share but I just thought I would share with you my pause and my think during the month of May. Thank you so much for being part of my journey, thank you to everyone who's inspired me and who is supporting me I'd love it if you could subscribe and like. And please feel free to leave a comment. I love them and I will always try to reply. If you want to see more sort of in the moment photos and stories, you can also follow me on Instagram as Sequin Girly. I hope you have a great week. Bye.